be more than human. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Joseph Carroll. I write under the pen name J.R. Carroll. And today is a video that um, I, I knew I was going to, uh, you know, do this eventually. I, I am reviewing The Cyborg Tinkerer by Meg Latour. Um, now, if you think, well, that's a, that's a name that sounds familiar. Um, whether you know, you know, directly off the top of your head, you know who she is, or if you just heard the name around, she is, um, probably the biggest literary agent turned author on, um, author tube. I think she just crossed like a hundred thousand, um, you know, subscribers and actually she probably would have done that ages ago, but she's been like off of, she just came back, uh, like a month or two ago and she was gone for like a year. Um, but yes, when I first, um, you know, was deciding I'm going to, I'm going to write a novel, right? Um, I went on YouTube and I'm like, all right, what's the, you know, trying to figure out, you know, everything from wh what type of things to write. Um, how to technically do it and all these things. The two names you'll most often find are um, Jenna Morassi and Meg Latour. Her channel is iWriterly. And she gives all kinds of advice. She does all the trope things just like Jenna Morassi does, but then she also does how to write um, you know, letters to editors and um, how to write letters to um you know, agents and all these things. And that's what she used to do, um, you know, years ago. And then she started this channel and, and, um, I actually used to be a Patreon of hers years ago. Um, you know, at, cause I thought she did really good work and everything. And I've always wanted to get around to reading her book. Um, and uh, yes, I've watched, uh, re some review videos of her book and you know a couple years ago and so i was like well you know the the time is now right because i you know did jenna morassi's book last month so i was like all right well i'll just go ahead and do meg's book as well and this is was she marketed it as a um steampunk space opera lgb uh q you know uh, polyamorous book is the way I think she uh, marketed it and when I first got into the book I mean there's some <laughs> there's some heavy erotica stuff like in the first chapter um, but it's not crazy throughout the book but it, I guess that was like I don't know to hook you in or something um, and I don't do a lot of romance books um, but this uh, the after you got past that like little initial part, the world is actually pretty interesting. Um, the way this world is set up is um, there's a there's cyborgs, right? But they have been outlawed in this star system um, like ten years ago. Uh, they were ten or twenty years ago. They were all outlawed, um, and she has a brain tumor. That's that's gonna kill her in a matter of a month or two, and this guy finds her and is like, "Hey, I can help you with that, but you need to come help us and be a tinkerer because her job has been a ship tinkerer. You know, she's like a mechanic, um, and so she's like, okay, I'll come check out whatever you need." And then she's like almost dies from this, you know, from the tumor. They they go in and operate on her and they turn her into a cyborg. Like one of her eyes is like an x-ray vision thing. And uh, so now they're like, oh, well, you signed a contract. You were with us for 13 years. And it turns out that she's now working for this famous cyborg, underground cyborg circus. And... It is, uh, it's pretty cool, but she ends up having to like operate on people. That's her job is to keep the cyborgs going. But then they, um, at some point there's this cyborg competition and the losers of each of these competitions have, they get kicked out. 
but when they get kicked out, the owner wants his implants back. So, you know, there were some pretty kind of gruesome graphic stuff where she's having to rip out arms and, you know, pacemakers and all kinds of weird stuff. Um, but I was, I was pretty excited about 20% of the way into this book. I was like, oh man, that's, you know, great. Con I'm a concept person. If you've watched my videos, I'm very much driven by concepts and the, the main character, Gwendolyn Grimm, uh, while she's here, um, there's a lot of like weird political intrigue in her backstory of her family. And then she falls in love with, um, she falls in love with one of the gymnasts, one of the girls uh, there. But then she also starts to kind of have feelings for this guy. Um, I don't know if his name's Sebastian or something in that name, that realm. But she starts feeling stuff for him too. So that kind of brings in this polyamorous thing that she's trying to build. And it's so crazy because the, all, the, and she pushed that as a marketing thing, but it's weird. Like all the stuff that she pushed as marketing the book is what held the book back. Like the romances and the sex and the polyamorous thing, all those things pulled me out of the story every time we were going through. Like we'll, we'll be getting a nice, nice cohesive story, you know, action and, and, uh, you know, some spy stuff and some breaking and entering and burglary and weird stuff like that. And I'm like, Oh man, good, 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 good. And then it felt out of disjointed, it felt disjointed. Like she's like, she goes, okay, well I got to get back to my messaging. So she jumps over here and you know, she's like, Oh, I love everybody. I love men. I love women. And it's like, well, that that's cool, but you got to figure out a way to weave that into the story so it feels seamless. For her, it felt like she had this great story that she did want to tell, but then she didn't want to. But she she was thinking like, oh, it, it's weird. As a writer, I can kind of see this in my head where she's like, she's like, oh, oh cool story, and like she's working out the plot, and she's actually writing, and she's getting in the groove. She's getting in the groove of the story. You know, and she's in the, you know, she's finishing up a fight scene and she's thinking about the next chapter, but then she goes, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. I got to make sure I get these, you know, I got to let people know that she likes her and then she likes him. And so it just kind of went, you know, you're like, you're sitting there like you're getting bounced around. You're like, just, just go, just tell me the story. Just tell me the story and forget all this other stuff, you know, but you know, she, uh, you know, she, that's, that's what she wanted. You know, she, she wanted to kind of, um, and that's, and, and that's what I always caution people about. It's like, just tell the story. If, if the romance is, you know, if the romance just flows into your story, then use it, but don't try to force something in there. <laughs> you know, it's not working. Um, and that's, and that has been kind of, when I've watched other reviews, that's something I also have seen. Like most people kind of agree on that point. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I like Meg. I was a Patreon back in the day. Um, but yeah, this, it just, it didn't work for me. Like uh, I didn't DNF it. I finished it. You know, I, I, you know, I finished the whole thing. Um, and like I said, it wasn't so bad that like if she made a second book and, and I, heard her talk about it and she sounded more confident about where she was going with the story maybe i maybe, maybe i'd give it a go um but yeah this uh the story just did not work out uh, and you know i feel bad to say it but yeah it's this this is a a, a down a downer for me but ha have you watched any of her videos let me know in the comments um whether you have or not um, if you've read the book, let me know. I would love to hear your opinions uh, on the Cyborg Tankerer. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, do all that, do all that good stuff. Uh, my Patreon is in the description, so check that out. And remember, be more than human.